Great Master, Ilarian. That human eye has not seen reveals to all the tenderness of God in the universal consciousness thereof. Let men then open the windows of their heart. Let them understand the supreme relief that is in manifestation. Humanity so frequently ponder upon the passing scene without realizing the eternal. The eternal is within you and around you. The eternal substance is the very being of God manifest in form. Humanity have perverted the way of purity, the way of beauty, and the way of the divine intent in their own consciousness. They have muddied their garments in the stream of human debris. But let me inform you deeply from within that you may understand that this has not affected one iota the manifestation of perfection within the being of man. When long ago, as St. Paul, I stood on Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that ye worship the unknown God. Him declare I unto you. Even then, as I spake unto them, I did understand within myself the nature of God for the cosmic apprehension of the divine nature by man is also immediate and permanent. The soul has always understood that which humanity have not defined with words yet. I am sure that in time to come a greater worded definition of the ideas of the cosmos and of the unknown God, him declare I unto you, will be made whereby man will be able to understand in a fuller and richer measure the great love of God, which literally drops as drops of life upon the stony ground of the heart and enables men to fear a little the great law, but also to hold it especially in reverence. These drops of life are the anointing of the Spirit upon the stony ground of the heart, that it may become a heart that is pliable and yielding to those beauteous pressures of the divine appearance. For the divine appearance is the salvation of every man. Let vision then be encountered that men may begin the process of perception of the divine image, that the unknown God be declared unto man as a living witness within themselves to the very presence of life. Life is indeed a gift of God to every man. Wise are they who perceiving the nature of the cosmic life that fruits within them with that measure of understanding which declares, I am the cosmic plan manifesting through me the perfection of eternal spheres. I am indomitable life, radiating light and love beyond the years. I am immortal strength, pouring my energy out into the world, fearlessly saluting the flame of God within me, for I am one with that flame. Will you understand then, one and all? Will you comprehend this light that shines in the darkness of man? First we have a situation where creation is not, and then we have the development or manifestation of creative manifestation. This is the light, the creative manifestation, shining in the darkness where nothing was perceived existing before. 
Let men realize in their heart. Let them realize in the depth of their soul that they are bathed with the stream of cosmic love and radiation from the beginning. The inception period is always within the consciousness of the eternal and therefore it is eternal and has not ceased to be. When men realize this, they will understand that the healing of broken bones, the healing of physical orbs, the manifestation of perfection where perfection does not appear is the miracle of the realization by man himself, the development of faith by man himself in the divine and permanent nature of God which never ceased to be. If God created man in the beginning perfect, why then is man not perfect still? He still is in the realm of perfection within. The only place that imperfection can manifest is on the screen of man's attention which affects and aborts in the molecular and electronic form those manifestations of perfection rightly emanating from within. The way then to heal and perfect is to change the thought and consciousness and to tune in with a divine perfection that has never ceased to be, that always is, beloved hearts. And if the perfection of God still is, why will ye tarry? Let me make certain that all understand me. The human is not in reality so much the physical form as it is the state of man's ridiculous consciousness. For he has aborted the consciousness of the divine image within himself and has taught his neighbor to do so. And as a result, by the teaching process and the learning process, humanity have absorbed imperfection from one another, whereas only perfection lives and creates life. To understand these words, I am that life, of perfection, abundantly pursuing the divine within me and reaching out to rejoin that perfection manifest everywhere, uniting all islands of light with one another to form a mainland of cosmic perception and truth whose mastery is the gift of God will create in man's consciousness the realization that he is able by a thought spiritually to change the dimensions of his consciousness and eventually also the manifestation of that consciousness which is in effect the power behind the screen of the appearance world. Do you see? In other words, beloved hearts, when mankind visualizes perfection from within and this perfection is adhered to long enough the very atoms and molecules, the substance of man, can and does yield to the perfection of the presence because the electronic manifestation of that perfection is transferred into the conscious mind of the individual. When the subconscious mind, that which you call the subconscious mind, accepts these ideas, then you see it is most easy to govern the outer appearance from within. Therefore man is a master of his destiny once he understands that perfection can be his and rightly so. Will you then give us today the pliable nature of your heart or will you evoke it? Will you call it forth? Will you ask that the condition of stony-heartedness attributed to Pharaoh in the time of Moses be removed from your consciousness? Will you ask God to give you a new heart of flesh? And by the word flesh is meant a new heart of pliability. For the flesh is pliable and easily molded by the thoughts and feelings of humanity. Therefore the nature of the wise is not to castigate themselves, but to chasten themselves into righteousness. 
to direct their mind by a form of curbing of human ambitions. Do you know how, beloved hearts, mankind today, by building a curb along the streets, is able to channel the falling rain? So the emotional body, the watery nature of man, can be governed by those firm and fine mental curbs which detect all the subtleties of the powers of the air and of the prince of the powers of the air, those deceitful manifestations of human thoughts which reside in Akasha, which are not of God but are contrary, therefore manifesting as Antichrist. Will you replace them now by attuning very finely and very beautifully with the radiance of your soul. Sense its immortality, sense its wholeness, sense its righteousness, sense its beauty, sense how it can endure and enjoy the whole plan of God, both now and forever. I thank you. vibratory action of the universe, of creation. I am come to remind you of the perfection of inner spheres. I am come to bring heaven nigh unto the earth. Within you is the polarity of the divine. Above you is the polarity of the divine. Down the crystal cord from the heart of your own God presence 
will flow that magnificent knowing which is the understanding of cosmos, which is the unraveling of threads of divine intensity, holding the secrets of universal creativity, magnifying the Lord and fulfilling the office of every man from within. Each man, each woman, each monad, each expression of the divine is the expression of perfection. When each one understands what gift God has placed within their hand, they will recognize that theirs is to command the realm within themselves, to produce the action correctly of drawing forth and magnetizing the overcoming of all mortal imperfection. What is imperfection, beloved hearts? Is it not the cloak of misqualification which individuals have wrapped around themselves, containing the very substance of light and misqualified energy? Let us then highly resolve that we together shall free humanity, for the healing of the nations is at hand. The healing of the nations must be administered through those who are above as well as those who are below upon the planetary body. The gift of life was given to you in order to assist humanity in coping with all of their many problems which they have not overcome. The world today still exists half slave and half free. The world still exists in a state of hunger and thirst after righteousness as well as after material substance. The world still exists midst the pleasures of palaces and hovels. It is our desire from the higher realm of light to bring the magnificent concepts forth which will enable mankind to be able to utilize the scientific accomplishments of this world in the construction and reconstruction of such a civilization reminiscent of golden ages now past and lingering still only in the Akashic ethers as the memory of the race, when better times and better understanding flooded forth, only once again to be swallowed up by the miasma of man's cloaked darkness. Now we come forth to you today to bring to you the knowledge of the higher spheres from within yourselves, to implant in your heart, in your heart's domain, those intense feelings of devotion and purpose that will enable all mankind, girding continents, spanning oceans, flooding forth from pole to pole with the understanding of the effervescence, the buoyancy, the intensity, the direction of the heavenly host. For as long ago the Christ appeared over the plains of Bethlehem, descending through the ethers, crying out, Lo, I am come to do thy will, O God. So also was fulfilled then the deliverance to the world of the bounty of a great soul. In him was the radiance of the Son of God. But in each of you also is encapsulated, as in all humanity, the radiance of the eternal God. But how few understand the pearl of great price that is within themselves. How few can grasp the intensity and need of this occasion to become a perfected being. The process becomes interminable to their consciousness for they do not see the end from the beginning. Let us then say that the little segment of life which is given to you a glimpse of consciousness of that which shall be is intended to afford you some recognition of the great future when you take dominion over your own earth from pole to pole, from head to feet. You are able then to establish within yourself the recognition of the realm of the divine. You are able to understand that your body is the temple of God. You are able to understand that your whole consciousness is filled with light and this light which you understand, which is so near to you, you will magnetize. You will determine to draw it forth. 
and upon the wings of your determination that will flow out from you through the media of the Holy Spirit, the dove of consecrated energy which will draw forth from the heart of God and divine beings the response which will flood the earth with light until man can scarcely contain it because it will be so beautiful, so magnificent in its intensity, so determined in its efforts to create a better world consecrated to the overcoming not only of human ills but also of personal human problems that mankind becoming self-sufficient in the domain of his own consciousness will draw forth the perfecting schemes of heaven that will create for him the awareness that heaven watches his progress, determines that his effort shall not be in vain and is for him fulfilling all things gloriously as he submits to the will of God. For the will of God flows forth as a great blue ocean of cosmic electrons flooding forth unto the earth the magnetizing power of the heavenly host that draws forth all copious abundance and manifested in the world of form. Mankind are vested by God with light and let them learn to magnetize it for light is light and life and light is also love. And as love magnifies in the chalice of human beings, the opportunity of man to see, not with a bird's eye view, but with a God's eye view of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit sees the world and the universe as one great mountain of cosmic attainment, fulfilling purpose divine, this will produce in man the realization of his accomplishment. And how many are needed how many hearts are needed? How many are excluded? Only they who exclude themselves by their lack of faith in God's abundance, by their lack of faith in God's purpose, by their lack of faith in the reason for their being. I come then this day, Meta, the daughter of Sanat Kumara, who long held for humanity upon this earth, the broad expanse of plain and sky that was the cosmic adventure drawing nigh to man even then, expressing the opportunity when man is able to perceive perfection, he will be able to become perfection, for he already is in the beautiful mother of pearl-like radiance of his soul, filled with electronic cosmic abundance that maketh whole, that draws him nigh, completing the goal of the divine, of the light in man. It is time now to behold the plan, to see at last and grasp the fullness of all that heaven has for you, each man, each woman, each child upon the planetary body has a master plan, an opportunity, even as a seed holds the portent of the covering tree that becomes a haven for the birds of heaven to nest in, so the consciousness of each one is intertwined purposefully with the magnificent God intent that makes man to realize I am the fullness of God's purpose. I am the fullness of God's life. I am the vitality of the central sun. I am the mastery of every electron, of every atom of my being. I am life indomitable. I am life overwhelming, grasping principles and flooding them forth as the being of God in finite form, infinity, coalescing its radiance with the finite realm and lifting it on wings of purpose into the fullness of the Lord that has said to his prophets, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Peace be upon you. As the mantle of purpose falls from our domain, electric and investing, so do I say, 
Confess, O souls, the purpose of God. By your life in action, here, bold and strong, without fear, man cannot affect your purpose. Only God can seal it in the electric flame of the Holy Spirit. I am that purpose within you. You are that which I am. Peace. Peace. Peace.
the radiant peace of our octaves of light enfold you one and all in our thought of emancipation, radiating the power of freedom throughout the ether. We bring peace to many hearts, devotees of the spirit from the east and from the west, hear our voice and are glad. They look upward to higher as we do for the slant of the consciousness from human octaves toward divine ones is a beauteous manifestation of cosmic symmetry. Men rightfully look upward to the hills that they may behold the manner of speaking of the higher one who have directed peace and love into human hearts that the chalices thereof may become surrounded with the flowers of divine grace, garlands of hope and mountains of cosmic accomplishment, hopefully radiated out into the world. Now the world seems so simple to consider, a terrestrial globe. In reality, the world is complex, and the manifestations of nature upon the world in varied life forms are complex and multifaceted in their manifestation. So is the being of man complex and multifaceted. Humanity rightfully look towards simplicity in order to enhance understanding. But one by one, men are being led through the steps upon the stairway of life to the realization of the magnificent complexities of God. Reducing these complexities to their first source, we find pure simplicity. Men should understand that the divine plan is to respond to the needs of humanity, to create answers to human needs and varieties to experience. These varieties have been called by some the spice of life. Perhaps it is so, and some seek more spice, whereas others seek more simplicity. Man is given free will to do as he will. Yet at the same time, his responsibility is clear. His responsibility toward life, toward his brothers, toward the opportunities that are given unto him. It is our hope that men will rise strong in consciousness with renewed vigor, and renewed understanding to observe the fountain of God in its magnificent flow. The Divine Mother nourishes the children of her heart. But let it also be noted that the man-child she brings forth is expected also to nourish the rivers of cosmos and embellish them with the beauties of accomplishment for I go unto my Father, unto your God, and unto my God. Is a fiat that also bears with its glad tidings the understanding of man's responsibility. He has drunk at the fountain of immortality the nectar of the Divine Mother. Now he is expected to replenish the fountain of immortality by his own continual offering of accomplishment to the mother of the world, bearing to the heart of the Father, to the eternal spirit, the magnificent peace he learns to externalize, to embellish and to crest the wave with the crown of his own self-mastery. Regeneration means a fountain of flow. 
the offering once again, moment by moment, to humanity of the depths, of the riches, of the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the ages, the eternal sense, the realization of the purposes of man. Man is a being endowed with magnificent vibrancy and power. But unless this power be utilized for the maturing of the beauteous consciousness he has been given, it is truly lived in vain. How long does it take mankind to learn this lesson? How long does it take humanity to grasp at last the reason for their being? It is to offer themselves naturally but it is also to receive the offerings of others. For cosmos is embellished with the delights of the hierarchy. It is infused with the nectar of myriad saints. As long ago Enoch said, Behold the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. This round number expression should bring to humanity the realization of infinite accomplishment among finite men. For finite men of old were also endowed with immortality. First they knew it not, then they knew it. And in the knowing of it and the grasping of this understanding comes the planning for immortal accomplishment, for immortal doing. We today, in our service, in 1971, are also offering the fruit of our service from aeons of past ages. For the process of going deeply within to the inner kingdom and bearing the fruit of that kingdom to humanity does not always incorporate just the experiences of a passing moment or the charades of humanity but often goes deeply into past ages and past historical Akashic records to recreate in the consciousness of men living now the awareness of the eternal fiats of God that of old opened and dried up the fountains of the deep. Let us express then to all our thought about humanity and how important it is that they begin to understand the fountain that flows within, to understand the nexus of qualification, to understand how the mind, by its sense of faith, and cosmic benignity can infuse the world with the structuring of ageless wisdom, the wisdom of the ages in expression, in the individual force field of countless lives, derives its divine satisfactions as men mount the ladder of achievement and become at last members of the body of celestial beings who again and again reach out to humanity as the tug upon our hearts occurs whereby we must respond to those who call unto us. Throughout Asia and the Eastern world, countless beings call unto us. Throughout the Western world, countless beings call unto Jesus. Let it be clear to all then that we individually must respond per se without speaking in any way disparagingly of our magnificent brothers of light, elder brothers of the race, such as Jesus and Paul, your beloved Hilarion, and others of our band. How strange it is that men become fragmented in their perceptions, seeing one orifice to the mouth of God, 
and closing others. When in reality, the whole of creativity, by God's grace, was intended to compound light, to restructure all things according to the patterns made in the heavens, that the beauty of the master potter's creations could become at last the free will of each being, spinning and weaving, composing and directing energies through the orifice of his mind, of his consciousness, the flow of delight would thereby bring new hope to men. As more and more sons and daughters of God came to realize their own divine nature. Why does the attention of humanity flow to negativity? Why does it flow to psychic drama and episodes? When in reality, the rivers of the spirit are also flowing in the higher octaves. And the thoughts of God about each life are flowing through his own consciousness simultaneously with the flow of subterranean rivers of psychic thought and negativity. Do you understand? One may tune out one and tune in the other. The process of selection is a magnificent one. Each soul, tenderly caressed with the purity of God, sees at last his own aborning desire, carried up to great heights, untrammeled by human creation. The light of our presence and the light of cosmic hope is never frustrating if one enters into it. It becomes a boon crowning all experience with its light. For of a truth, the light rays from above reach down to the most subterranean depths and create those subterranean fires of enthusiasm in mortal men whereby they become immortal. The positing of the consciousness in realms of nirvana is an experience of great delight, which one learns to forego as one understands that they carry their own nirvana with them, wherever they are, wherever they go. The beauty of God's love does flow and flow and flow. And the realms below here are also realms from which we must cast out both tear and fear. For man must become free to understand that he is deathless, birthless, and immortal. That he is not cast in the mold of the outer creation of the coat of skins, but he is ever an immortal spirit, a being flaming as a star spark, coming forth from the realms of cosmic peace and creativity into cosmic motivation. If the cosmic motive is to become the crystal diamond he wears, the jewel before which he prays as an altar that gem-like appears before him, he is to understand that the invocation of cosmic accomplishment, of ascended consciousness, of ascended mastery, is his to both behold and to be. Man by destiny, God ordained, is intended to become one who imbibes the fountain of immortal life. He seeks to drink the nectar of the cup, and drink it he will, but he also must drink of the cup, which is the Master Jesus said, I shall drink of, and ye shall drink of also. The redemption of mortal karma is the crown of experience whereby man at last becomes karmaless and God-free, entering into the realities of his natural being. He becomes a spiritual emissary of infinity, sparking in the infinite world in others the same realizations that drew him 
magnetically toward the islands of cosmic delight from the mainland of mankind's emotion and psychicism. We call today for souls to be free. We call today that all may see the strands of God's love, immortal bright, reaching forth, pure and white, with their arms beckoning light. Oh, come and see and be the fountainhead. I am, for you are also free. In coming to you today, it is to generating a greater awareness of mankind's need today. For they are so far from the fountainhead of reality, yet so near, realizing it not, they continually drink of the cups of fear and delusion. Confusion fills their mind, and often they become both blind and unkind. Now we speak, once again, beckoning, the Wiesach Festival has passed and the re-coming of our cycle each year has momentarily passed its crest. Once again we shed a tear of concern for humanity. We pray that they may burn in cosmic delight with a reinfusion of hope that the world will become reborn in a new spirit of love, of peace, and of harmony. For these are the gifts by which we were raised. These are the gifts of God by which one by one you will pass through the veil into that immortal sun of cosmic strength and being, your own I am presence, your inward perception, your inward seeing of all that I am shall ye be also. May heaven bless your honest effort. This is my prayer.
how tender and how firm are the concepts of the infinite God for all upon the planetary body. We come in the name of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood to bring you peace and a sense of devotion to our causes and the causes of the brotherhood. Let not your hearts be troubled by outer conditions, neither let them be afraid. For the purposes of God exist within you independent of all of your functioning. They exist and they are. Just let the eternal power that is within you manifest. Let the eternal power of the light take dominion over outer conditions and be at peace in the knowing of cosmic purpose. Humanity place their attention upon outer conditions and are moved by them. Those of you who have received the instruction in the light understand the need to allow yourselves to follow the direction of the eternal presence within you. You understand the need to bring yourselves thusly under the control of the purposes of the brotherhood and the purposes of the eternal God, your own mighty I am presence. Know then that this day I am also sending out simultaneously into the world of form to the hearts of billions upon the planetary body the vibratory action of becoming awake. The result of this vibratory action upon humanity may not at first be apparent, but we are confident because we have raised the level of our attention upon the functionings and doings of humanity that many will voluntarily respond to the vibratory actions of our love. Our love flows into the world and with it is the divine intent amplified and sent out to call many souls homeward in the sense that their consciousness at last begins to become aware of the tenderness of the eternal vine. I am the vine, ye are the branches. These concepts of beloved Jesus are also the concepts of the hierarchy extending out into the world of form and producing awareness of cosmic purpose. Man should relate to his source. He should understand gladly the fulfillment of all that is the divine intent for him. He should relax his consciousness from outer fulfillments by understanding that first he must seek the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Do you see, beloved ones, how tender and how beautiful the divine concepts are? How in reality they have no relationship to the confusion of humanity today in relation to what occupation they shall pursue. In reality, the business of living devotedly aware of your God presence and of your purposes will enable you also to fulfill those outer purposes more beneficently unto humanity. You are living manifestations of the purposes of God and of the brotherhood. You are living manifestations endowed with the purposes of immortal life. You are immortal life in manifestation. Will you allow these concepts to be posited in your mind and heart? Will you cease to think of yourself 
as though you are here today and gone tomorrow. Remember, beloved ones, that from the foundation of the world, you have been a part of the vast scheme of cosmic grace. You have flooded forth into space with the light of the immortal Christ. You have flooded forth again and again upon the planetary body and how very little in reality of the purposes of cosmos has become externalized within the force fields of your own identity. O oh, beloved ones, so many times you have allowed yourselves to become the victim of what you have called or termed a happenstance, a set of circumstances saying circumstances govern. Beloved ones, they do not, if you understand the cosmic law, because we constantly, from our level, create those graces that overcome circumstances. Circumstances yield to the power of the holy will of God, the firming of cosmic ideals. Have you thought of how the little tiny elements themselves, the tiny elementals, manifest throughout nature? How a flower or a vine will shatter rock and force its way into the physical appearance world? Have you begun to realize today how in yourself this self-same power to shatter opposition exists? But it must be firmed. You must understand the cosmic law by practically becoming the cosmic law until you can fit yourself into this framework of cosmic manifestation. Naturally, the powers of earthly limitations surround you. But the Christ consciousness, the consciousness of overcoming, the consciousness of victory, this is God's gift to each one if he will receive it. This originated in the very beginning with you all, simultaneously with your outpouring into the world of form came this magnificent gift, a part of your own very being, hidden now within the recesses of your consciousness. Are these manifestations of infinite grace, the love and the purpose of God that overcomes outer conditions. You have heard it said of old in one of my embodiments, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Let me say unto you today that the peace of God, which passeth, which conveyeth, which transfers understanding to humanity, abides still within the capacity of every man. Outer conditions may momentarily dissuade you from the realization of that peace, or you may permit it to take some outer dominion over your life. But in reality, the power is still there. It requires but the flame and fanning of your attention upon it to produce the cosmic miracles of the witness of immortal life right within yourself. How beautiful are the divine manifestations that create in consciousness the magnificence of the eternal Eden, the Eden of spiritual flowers, heavy with the scent of God's grace that pours out in the very essence of the blooms themselves. Will you breathe them in now as you breathe in each erg of energy from the air itself? As you take in through your nostrils the breath of life, feel the cosmic charge of divine grace within them, the power to firm your wills, the power to strengthen the subconscious manifestations of life that already direct certain aspects of the outer flow that ultimately can be guided and directed still more by the God flame within until you feel that essential radiance 
that makes of you a manifest son of God. So many are subject, by reason of their own sense of limitations, to outer darkness and gnashing of teeth, without realizing that there is no need for the sons of God to cry unto the mountains, fall upon us. For mountains of substance would not give you freedom, but the spiritual power within you will. Substance itself is nothing more than what we may term frozen spirit manifesting as material substance. In the manifestation of substance, the dancing electrons, the life energies of God, gleefully exchange and move onward as upon a cosmic belt, none of them being long imprisoned in one position in time and space, but gaily trooping back to the heart of the great central sun for renewal, hourly, momentarily. Will you understand then that the consciousness of man may become more closely identified in a childlike manner with the eternal presence of the spiritual wind, the divine wind, coming through the cosmic ethers, manifesting in heart and consciousness, tenderly caressing each manifestation of himself. God evolves man as he has, not only through this century, but to all the centuries and millenniums that have preceded it, onward, upward, into a vast network of cosmic grandeur. The corridors of eternity are here, but they are also within yourself, and the gateways are there within yourself. The gateways and the stones that ought not to become stones of stumbling, but rather rolled away from the empty tomb of material consciousness, until you are able at last to fashion for yourself a new domain of reality, the reality that in consciousness cleanses the mind by its own inward doings, the doings that are of the nature of ascended master concepts and thoughts that flood forth into the consciousness the glory of the garments that you may one day wear, yea, that in reality you may wear today if you will only understand how gradually they are formed around you, almost gossamer-like, filmy filaments of light substance, manifesting and weaving the wonder of eternal spheres for you today. For they do not suddenly appear, beloved ones. This is a myth. They are woven out of the substance that passes through your own heart. The antakarana, the substance of immortal light that weaves and weaves and weaves the busy looms of cosmic life then, forming at last within your consciousness the grace of the Christ that is within you. How well I remember our offering unto God in the days of St. Francis, as you call me. How well I remember the stones of stumbling that were cast in our pathway. How we remember when first we took dominion over certain tiny elements in nature. We reached out into the clouds and we bid them to form in those concepts we held in mind and with wonder beheld how the winds and nature herself hastened to obey. And then we begin to understand still more and less nebulous concepts came under our dominion, firmer concepts of material substance, until we understood that outer conditions could easily pass away by the breath of our Lord, by the breath of the eternal God, fresh as the eternal springtime, green with the verdure of peace and purity and healing, the abundant life, the cornucopia, of cosmos flooded into our consciousness, concepts tumbling one by one, free concepts of immortality, until at last we said unto the wind itself, Brother wind, we spoke unto the elements as familiar friends, for no darkness was ours to witness, but only the infinite light of cosmic transition, the movement of cosmos swallowing up itself in one grandeur of delight that flowed and flooded forth unto the world, the eternal God, the divine Pavarello, they called me. 
But why should it not be so? To give away all to the wind was to receive of the wind all in return. And only as we gave did we receive. And only as we received could we give. And ultimately, the fashion of his radiance grew within us, matured, and destined us to be what we are today. No departed ones, none who have ceased to be, but only those who have continued to free. For we free the world and all mankind by our love, and our love is of the density of light, and light is no density. It is the expansion of the flame from the heart of the great central sun, white hot with the beat of freedom within it, embodying for all the concept of infinity. There is no struggle there, but only the firm realization that our prayers are reality, and we watch as they become so. We watch and we glory as we see the flame of purpose born at last to the earth. None need fear. The freedom of that holy morn so dear shall appear right here in your consciousness. Dawning witness, waiting, clearing, freeing, on bated breath, men await the appearance of their own reality. They shall see, and they shall be as we are, witnesses of the eternal sun glow, the filaments of the morning woven within their consciousness, a morning new concepts, freeing, brilliant, dreaming, a radiance, a morning reality, life, love, abundance. I am all of this and you are all that I am as you understand the oneness of our love. We break the bread of the Christ with you this morning and vanish from your gaze. of humanity throughout the world are stirring, coming to the awareness of the meaning of life. Yet much remains to be done. From our octave of light, beauty and strength is flowing, and the realization 
of the divine purposes are being made known. O mankind, as the waves of the sea beat upon the shore, so do the calls of humanity for illumination about the purposes of life and the understanding of life beat upon the shore of God's heart and upon the stones, the eternal rocks of the cosmic hierarchy. So many people today are unaware of the hierarchy. They are unaware of the stair steps that lead to the heart of spiritual achievement. And the world today is in the midst of a time of serious plotting against the understanding of humanity, against their grasp of cosmic principle. Again and again, they are being kept through the thraldom of the senses and the various forces that are playing upon them as those in bondage. We come today to remind you of the calls of humanity and of the need for stability of purpose in all of your doings. Our hearts speak to you today and your hearts of necessity must respond. For the heart of God speaks through those who become the open door to humanity's calls. Have you ever thought, beloved ones, how you individually become very much involved with cosmic ideas and cosmic actions so that your doing become the doings of God. Let me say to you, in effect, you are his hands, his feet. Yea, also, you become a part of the eternal mind. For the great sea is there, and the inlet to the sea, that is your own private domain. One day, it will become inundated and the garments of understanding that you wear will be gloriously adorned and embellished with those cosmic embroideries which create the motifs of the spirit signifying attainment. At the present moment, you are on the pathway. You are step by step moving forward into light. But yours is also to answer the heart calls and not to leave it all to us from our octave. Be mindful that we are near, willing to assist and help you also in that giant outreach of your heart that involves humanity. We are also concerned especially for you that you become the best vessels unto honor that you become no longer stricken with mortal afflictions and the domain of human mistakes. But eventually, unlearn those mistakes you have made. Reestablish yourself in the great fountain of the eternal sea. Be a part of the divine life plan not only for the planet, but for all cosmos, but especially, beloved hearts, in those involvements that are so very much a part of your individual self at this moment. Be free, be loving, be kind. Understand the way of peace. Understand the way of purity. Never can you possess an excess of peace or an excess of purity. For that matter, beloved hearts, let me speak to you clearly. You cannot possess an excess of any divine quality. Therefore, you will always be involved in the process of discovery of your real talents, 
which are the talents of Almighty God, manifesting in you as you give them liberty by your will and your love. Your devotion is the fire by which we fan the flame unto the earth to awaken many hearts to cosmic purpose. If those fires were to go out or become banked, I am sure that the hopes of many would be temporarily stilled. Will you understand your role then in becoming a living furnace of cosmic fire, radiating that white light into the world of form and understanding also that you need not wait for the moment when from the outer standpoint you can truly say, Lo, I am perfect. For that which speaketh within you and saith, Even now, I am perfect, is your God presence, your outer self, dutifully seeking to fulfill all of the aims of the inner presence of life within you, does also reach out hopeful arms to that presence. But you should understand that there are many interfering factors that attempt to divert the attention of humanity and bring that attention into bondage until man can no longer successfully direct the course of his own human events. Will you then today, in full faith, accept my word as the gentle murmuring of the sea, as the gentle murmuring of cosmic love. Let our love literally seep into the domain of your consciousness. Let it flow. Let us intensify the cosmic action of our light. Let us place flowers upon the very bosom of the sea, floating and drifting, facets of magnificence, the hope of cosmic love that you are. Pure and stainless is the heart of nature, fulfilling those purposes in man that lead to the culmination of the earthly drama as the heavenly drama begins to take over. For when the curtain falleth upon earthly accomplishments, Man should clearly understand that it only then begins in a more direct way in those cosmic accomplishments that are more gloriously fortified by cosmic doings when the fruit of understanding is born at last in you. Your earthly novitiate is given to you for a purpose and that purpose is the welding together of all the various facets of understanding until you will learn how to function in the spiritual realm, how to move, how to be conscious, how to overcome death in the great fantastic reality of life. Will you understand with me then this day that all of this is part of the purpose of being, that you are even now engaged in your cosmic novitiate? You are learning you are overcoming. You are accomplishing something. There are times when you say, of what use or value is my life? Let me tell you, you have no right, nor does any man to decide that his life is truly not a cosmic purpose. In many cases yet unborn. But truly, one day, all will come clear. The mind and heart inflamed with cosmic passion, reaching out to the heart of humanity, will beckon many to follow in your footsteps. In your overcoming, you should understand that you are fulfilling divine destiny. You are fulfilling cosmic will. You are fulfilling cosmic purpose. Your life is not your own. It belongs to that lofty purpose which launched you originally and brought you forth that you might become overcomers of all that is darkness and teachers of all that is light. Understand how through good works you can admonish one another and build one another up 
in the faith. Realize that the God that is within you longs for the fulfillment of His purpose. And many times when you seem, blessed ones, to be outwardly bored by repetition, understand that it is the voice of cosmic reason once again reminding you in the outer realm of the inner covenant you have with God. The purpose is then, as they ring clearer, will be no death knell, but a song of resurrection, the tolling of cosmic bells. You have heard it said that there is more joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth than over many who are already righteous. So you should understand then that there is room in the cosmic domain for those who have walked in darkness. If only they will love light more than they love darkness. For darkness is not. It is a misqualification of energy. It is a millstone round about the neck of humanity. The light will deliver mankind. The light will free. And the great tides of the sea will be heard by the soul in the inner ear. And the inner hearing of his voice will lead mankind to rejoice in the footsteps that are before him yet. He will not become frustrated by boredom, seeking for some form of outer amusement to assuage his own self-pity. Nay, instead, he will seek for the delightful, pleasing of the consciousness of God. Have you ever stopped to think, beloved ones, what it means to please the consciousness of God. Remember that God gave ye birth. You were all given mind and being and individuality as a gift from His precious hand. Will you then, with your heart of hearts, seek to understand the meaning of His nearness for a purpose? Will you understand by giving yourself in consciousness to Him, you bring happiness and joy to the Spirit? And this is that which ye are. For you are far more spirit than you are simply matter. Matter is the imprisoned matrices of spirit that God has for a time placed in your domain that his purposes may be fulfilled. One day he can but clap his hands and all will come home in light, hopeful, Deliriously, delicious light. Have you thought of the cup of light that you can quaff? Have you thought of the cosmic elixir that your soul can drink? Have you thought of the water of life that floweth freely unto mankind? Recognize then that you are not your own. But why is it so? Because God first made you to liberate you, to glorify you, to cleanse you, to make you all that He is. Surely His purposes should be honored and the flowers of devotion strewn upon the altar of being by your hearts, light and love. Let us then beckon to the children of this world and say to them wherever they are, you are the handiwork of God. Let no statement of human animalism dominate your consciousness. Let no dickering with the facets of science and scientific possibilities rob you of your spiritual birthright. Come to full awareness that no matter how far outer science may go in their manipulation of life upon this planet, and of environmental control. The true domain of self-mastery is the kingdom of heaven within you. Then let us say, awaken and quicken this kingdom in the hearts of many upon the planetary body. So many lack understanding. So many are captured in a web of their own confusion. Let us then bring forth the reality of the ages that they may read, that all who read 
and run may understand. Let the concepts of the everlasting gospel through the forthcoming book come forth and let nothing stay your hand. Stay your own heart now by cosmic stability and purpose and know that humanity will bless you and I will truly bring them to your feet that have hated you that they may know how much I have loved thee is still the living promise of God. Will you accept it also and in humility understand that the kingdom of purpose is the kingdom of the golden age of the future and of all the golden ages climbing cycle stair everywhere until cosmic abundance like a cornucopia of infinite joy flowing and transmuting becomes the lot of every girl and every boy all knowing that at last reality is born within them so long as it slumbered and slept and they have not known it. Now it comes full cycle, the cycle of cosmic reality, the dance of destiny, and a joyful noise is made unto God from the hearts within. And all comes under the dominion of love. When you ponder the elements of nature, when you ponder the wind, when you ponder the sea and you ponder its depths, when you ponder the earth and you consider its groanings and movings, its depths and its wisdom entailed in all of its doings, when you understand the mysteries of the fire without and the fire within, O oh, mankind, be born anew, and let the spirit that fashions you be esteemed in grandeur. The miracle of the ages is born, and the wholeness of all life cycles are no more torn by ignorant hands and careless hands. But hearts once again understand how God can raise the veil, rendering obscurity plain, until at last the very light of the ages rests upon your heads and hearts as an eternal crown the purpose made known everywhere abundance peace reality and the fruit of cosmic light let us then determine today that all of you each day will send forth to the waters your love Send forth to the waters the direction of your God flame. Send forth to the earth your love and your love to the direction of the earth and its movements in God's grace. Send forth your love upon the mountaintops. Send forth the radiance of his face. Send forth your love to the air, to the wind, and let your love Rest as a sweet kiss upon all nature. Send forth your love to the fire and be alive, vibrant, and renewed. Send forth your love to every creature, great and small, and that all be raised. For that which raiseth one, raiseth all. This is the flame of purpose reborn in you. And as you move into the days and the cycles of the years, let your determination allay your fears and all that is darkness and all that is weakness and all that has been for the former things are passed away. Behold, the light, the flame of God renews the covenant daily, hourly, momentarily. The flame lives, the flame vibrates and the hands of the nations and the children of the age reach forth and all who shall ever be born upon this planet reach forth. And the voices of the many, as the voices of many waters, rests upon the land. And in the heart of man is given the great command, I am destiny, cutting men free. I am destiny, revealing to thee the secrets of nature 
the secrets of eternity.